So it's been a few days since Nervy Let's release and I haven't done one of these CN type of videos in a long while but I thought it could be very interesting for those of you who want to keep up with how other top players have been using him and even if they've been using something that you didn't even think of. Also I do want to say we finally got a discord for my YouTube channel now. So if you're interested in joining that community and making some new friends, I'll put the link down below. And if you do join, I hope you enjoy your stay. Uh, just a disclaimer, this video is more focused on low cost hardcore gameplay. Um, it's always difficult to define this, but low cost is vertical investment where you might get one or two five star weapons. You can stay at C0 or maybe a very strong C1. But it's not like you're getting several constellations or playing dolphin or whale teams and you can do low cost stuff as a free to pay player or a low spender. I wouldn't say it's about spend level but it's just about your priorities and how you want to spend your primo gems. Also this type of optimization is very hardcore. Speedrun meta is very different to you could say casual meta and even the word meta in general is very unclear and it's a very subjective word. This level of optimization is not necessary for any player who just wants to get their Abyss 36 star and be done or even as a player who's playing more casual. This is very sweaty, there's no in-game benefit and speedrunning in general is just players optimizing to get the fastest runs for fun. And the last disclaimer which is on Nervilet as a whole, this particular abyss does buff him a lot with the blessing and even the layout with Magukenki, with the pyro crab on chamber 2 and in chamber 3 you can line enemies up very well. So all this might change very quickly, you never know and it's hard to give any long term conclusions on him as things can easily change in future abysses. So the first thing is about this spinning tech. I know this has kind of gone viral since he came out and a lot of people are even kind of concerned that this thing where you spin Nervilet's beam around for the most optimal AoE damage and you might think everyone is going to have to do that and this is just how his gameplay is. I'm sure you think it's almost comical and it's very goofy and you probably don't want to change your mouse settings. But I don't think people need to worry about it since, at least so far, this tech is only really used for Whale Constellation 6 Nervilet kind of stuff since the C6 has this burst extension and you can just mow down enemies. If you don't have that C6, it doesn't seem like anything you need to bother with. Now it is possible if there's an AoE chamber and there are very low HP enemies, then it could be used at lower budgets but in most situations this seems very unlikely and even then this might even get patched out, I'm not sure. So let's get into speed running teams that people have been using. As a summary, basically the two variants you should watch out for is either a mono hydro team which is usually Kazuha, Zhongli, Mona or actually it's a vaporized team where you replace Mona with Xiangling. You can even replace Zhongli with other alternatives but we'll get into that later. And also as I'm mentioning these teams I need to stress again that the current blessings and just the current abyss in general might be affecting some of these things too so it's not a certainty that these are going to be his main archetypes moving forward. Also a quick note on Hyperbloom, um, I'm sure a lot of you may have seen this coming but at least so far it is true that Hyperbloom in terms of speed running it doesn't really have much for use. Even at the C0 4 star weapon level you still want to treat him as like a main DPS and buff his damage with supports and this should be the case whether you're speed running with one of Hydro, Taser, Vaporize or whatever. Now this could change in future abysses. Obviously a lot of people at the more casual level do enjoy playing Hyperloom with him, it's a very strong team and as far as speed running goes this can change in future abysses but this is the way things are at least for now. So onto Mono, Hydro and Taser teams. So in my review video I did think that using both Zhongli and Fischl was good but it really did feel uncomfortable and awkward for me to play. I found it very unnecessarily complicated trying to buff both Nervilet and Fischl and also I wasn't really sure if Fischl's damage would be relevant in speedruns. 
Whereas I did say that I thought that Mona felt like one of the few viable Hydro teammates and I'm quite pleased that my thoughts ended up translating a bit into practice and Mona seems very popular at the moment. With her you get Hydro Resonance to increase Nervulet's HP, you obviously get Mona's damage buff and she can battery Nervulet a little to help with energy. A lot of people are also using Prototype Amber which can provide small healing to your team but also importantly it generates energy for her and makes her much more comfortable to play. Playing Mona and only having to worry about buffing Hydro damage is a lot more simple and easy to play than having to worry about Fischl. Obviously Mona isn't perfect and she has a lot of flaws but she seems to be quite good for now. As you can see there are some very good speed runs using Mona and I think it's fair to say the more invested your Nervula is the more value you get out of Mona compared to Fischl. Now having said that I have seen runs that used both Mona and Fischl and replacing Jungli instead. This video is just a showcase though since it uses a level 20 weapon and lower talents but this is done so you can just see the potential of this team and it shows that this team can still work. So I'm definitely not underestimating Fischl and I think it's pretty safe to say that a three character core of Nervilet, Kazuha and Mona, Jungli or Fischl and, and you can call it Hyper Carry or you can call it Mono Hydra and Taser but regardless this team seems to have good potential and it seems to be fairly popular. So into the exciting part of this video and one thing I didn't expect in my previous video was the strength of his vaporized teams. So this run is from the same uploader as the 60 second Mono Hydra run and this was amazingly 7 seconds faster than that. And the uploader explains how just Guobot can let Nervilet vaporize three times. And people even draw similar comparisons to Yoimiya vaporize where, where you don't vaporize all of our normal attacks but you do vaporize some key hits in your combo. And giving Nervilet some key vaporize hits, even a vaporized burst, it can be very good for multi-wave fights or even fights with phases like Magu Kenki. Just a bit of extra front loaded damage can go a long way. In this particular run, Child has Favonius Instructor, so don't worry too much about this. He is used for Hydro Resonance, his talent that gives plus one to Nervilet's normal attack, obviously Instructor and helping with Hydro Swirls. And also importantly, Child is very good for dealing with the Pyro Crab. So it's important to understand that this is a very particular team and Child would probably be replaced by Jungli or Mona if Crab Chamber wasn't here. And also in general, it's harder to recommend a team like this in particular since it has no healer or shielder. So this is more reliant on Nervilet C1 and it's kind of a speedrun only team and a more practical version would use Jungli instead of Child. I'd say this is quite an important distinction because a lot of the Nervilet vape hype at the moment is people using him at Constellation Zero with four star weapons. So vaporize definitely isn't limited to just C1. So you can see in this other video example, there's one vaporize with his burst and then two with his charge attack. And then if you have Guoba and Cosmos Burst or Guoba and Pyronado, that can let Nervi let Vaporize even more charge attacks. It's also very interesting to see the power of a multi-hit Pyronado here. I cover this in one of my old national videos. And just like other characters, Nervi let seems to have his own technique where he can speed up Xiangling's Pyronado too. So in regards to Vaporize, I actually can't tell if this is overhyped or it's perfectly hyped since there is a lot of hype with this team at the moment. Especially as I said with lower budget levels like C0 and 4 star weapons, there is a lot of hype. There's even some debates on NGA if Vaporized Nervulet was a mistake or not and this is quite a big discussion. Some people argue that it was a mistake and others say that Sacrificial Jade, the battle pass weapon, because it gives element of mastery, this is a clue that Hoyaverse considered this and it's not a mistake. And there's even some people talking about Sacrificial Fragments on Nervulet. The Vaporized hype is that real and it's really hard to tell if this is the next big thing or not since Sacrificial Fragments does let him create Create more droplets which means he can spam his charge attack longer. We're getting into serious big brain territory here and his EM substat is very valuable in vape teams so you're not really missing out there. 
There is also a debate how Nahida might be better than Kazawa in these teams. One of the reasons due to the VV debuff duration being short with Kazawa and it potentially being easier to sustain vapes with burning. But to be honest, I'm not very hyped about this. I would doubt the practicality of this. And as we know, you can never underestimate Kazawa's grouping utility and practical performance. And especially vaporized teams without grouping, it seems even more unpractical. Okay, so my thoughts on Vaporize. Of course, Yua Shangling does need to have an insane amount of energy recharge, but she is solo pyro and that should be expected by now. That's just something you're gonna have to build. But this team composition seems very exciting and I'm very interested how it develops. Shangling is clearly very good for setting up nuke potential for Nervulet and Gorba and Pyronado helps with vapes especially that she can help lower budget Nervulets, increase his DPS windows and potentially allow him to push through damage thresholds you wouldn't have been able to push through otherwise. It is worth noting though that these vape setups are somewhat rigid and we should note they can fall off in some types of AoE situations where you aren't able to group with Kazo well and Pyronator isn't able to hit everyone. In this case, as you can see, people are still able to brute force some of the enemies you can't group together. You can even use Kazo's burst to help with range, but, but it's fair to say things can get more scuffed and Vaporize definitely isn't without flaws. Lastly, I just want to go over Nervilet's powerful Constellation 1 and Signature Weapon, which might have been expected. For his Constellation 1, the extra stack by itself can be a big damage increase since he is a hyper carry and doing most of his team's damage and his charge attack is most of his own damage. So around a 20% plus increase, that would be a big damage buff to your entire team. Let's also not forget that the extra stack allows you to play another Hydro teammate since you have to worry about one less reaction and being able to run Hydro Resonance is more HP which means more damage for Nervulet and the Hydro character can provide more Hydro particles to your team which means less energy issues for Nervulet. And then on top of that, this interruption resistance can be very huge in the future. I would say at the moment though, because Jungli is still one of Nervulet's best teammates, even just the damage wise ignoring the shield, this means that this interruption resistance is not really at its full potential yet. And as we know, even in other teams in Genshin where Jungli is very synergistic, like maybe a Hu Tao team or a Yoimiya or a Shao team, even though he does work well with them, he doesn't really get used in their super speed running teams so i would say with Nervulet it's only a matter of time before there becomes a higher dps teammate option whether that comes in a few months or a year who knows but it's only a matter of time and when that does happen and when Jungli does become replaceable this interruption resistance buff will be a lot more noticeable so as you can see overall there is so much power budget in this constellation one and it impacts Nervulet in so many different ways it's very strong and then in regards to his signature weapon, Eternal Flow. I already covered this in my previous video, but this is obviously a big damage increase, especially over Prototype Amber, the free to play option. And just like with C1, this damage increase is a big deal for a hyper carry like Nervulet. And it's also worth noting, I don't think I mentioned this in my previous video, but even the Battle Pass weapon at R5, it does have a restriction with field time. Now this might not always be an issue but it could be whereas his signature is basically unconditional. And overall you could say Nervila is somewhat similar to Hu Tao and Raiden characters like that where early upgrades like this are very popular with their mains. It seems C1R1 is very popular with Nervulet mains. And although I did cover that he's definitely still good at C0 with 4 star weapons, these early upgrades are still going to be popular anyway. Although one downside I have to say is unlike Hu Tao and Raiden, Nervulet doesn't have as much 4 star teammate potential as they have. So that can make him feel that playing his teams there's huge gaps in performances with each investment. He has a lot of 5 star teammates so whether you have Kazuha or Zhongli or his C1 or his signature weapon, a lot of these five stars can add up to potentially make a significant performance difference very quickly. Luckily, as we've covered, he does have good teammates in Chungling and Fischl too. So this might not be as big of a deal as it might appear now. I will say I am unsure if we can see him speedrun much at lower cost due to this. 
we will have to see what happens in the future but it's not like he's in a situation like Shao where he's got a lot of four star teammates. Hopefully you guys found this video insightful. As I've said many times throughout this video, nothing is guaranteed. A lot of this is early insight, but I thought a lot of this will be very informative for some of you. I'm sure a lot of you might not have expected Vaporize to be this significant and this hyped. So maybe you guys can try this out and let me know how you get on with it. Thanks for watching.